Jeff, congratulations on a huge scoop. That's that's great stuff for you, and we're happy to have you on. Thank you, boys. I'm looking forward to that $430 million contract <laughs> next time around. I think ESPN's got me in my arbitration years right now. <laughs> well, you know, that's tough, but that's the way the game is played now. So I actually tweeted this out earlier, and for some reason it's getting a lot of traction on Twitter. But when I saw $430 million, a lot of people were like aghast, and I said, wow, I can't believe him. I can't believe they got him for that price because I believe if he becomes a free agent, he will be a free agent that people would bid on. I think they actually got a good deal, the Angels. What's your thoughts? I think the Angels got a good deal, too. And it's crazy to say because this is the most expensive deal in the history of professional sports, but right. it's also one that if you look at what Mike Trout has produced to this point is a bargain. And I, I know that's counterintuitive. I know there's some cognitive dissonance involved there because how can $430 million be a bargain? But when you're putting up 8 to 10 win seasons every single year and a win above replacement is worth $8 million or so, I mean, the, the production that this guy is putting out there on an annual basis is unparalleled not just in present-day baseball but in baseball history. I mean, Mike Trout is off to the best start of any career through age 26 in baseball history. He is better than Babe Ruth. He is better than Mickey Mantle. He is better than Ty Cobb. He's better than all of the luminaries who have been in the sport throughout its 150-year history. What's so weird about it is we were talking about it earlier in the show that he just doesn't resonate like a sports star. And I know that that really upset Rob Manford back in the day, felt that he, he should be more out there. But how has it felt in Los Angeles, who's usually pretty passive about sports anyway, but... I mean, how, how does he resonate? Did he put, put fans in the seats? Did he put eyeballs to TVs? Or, or is he kind of felt out there the way he's felt out here where we know he's great, but not many people have gotten a chance to really see him? You know, I think that's a, a very astute point and one that's understandable. I also think that when it comes to Mike Trout, he's just not the guy who puts him out, puts himself out there like that. That's not his style. That's not his personality. It's not who he is. And and it would be fighting against his reality, which has taken him this far and shown him this much success professionally and personally to try and be something that he's not. And I think the Angels are comfortable with that. I think that they understand and like Mike Trout for what he is. And yeah, would it be nice if he were the guy out there doing commercials all the time or the guy who had marketing campaigns built around him? Of course it would. But but they're not going to put the square peg in the round hole. Uh, you know, the, the square hole is really nice right now, and he fits right into it. And uh, their hope is that Shohei Otani can be that guy. Uh, you know, if, if he comes back from Tommy John surgery and pitches as well as we saw him last year, all of a sudden we've got the best player in baseball in Mike Trout and the most unique we've seen in a century in Otani. It's interesting that what baseball has become because for a while, everybody was fantasizing, well, wait till um, Nolan Arenado becomes a free agent. Wait till Mike Trout becomes a free agent. The next name is wait till Mookie Betts becomes a free agent. But baseball's adjusted now. They're not letting these guys become free agents, and the guys are smart enough to see that the free agent game is you know, fraught with uh, a lot of things that could go wrong, and they're being offered these big contracts, and they're taking them. We might not see great free agents anymore. Well, let's not forget, though, Michael, in the last month, Manny Machado signed for $300 million and Bryce Harper signed for $330 million. I, I right. think free agency, uh, the, the issue with free agency for baseball players is a lot more for those mid and low mid-tier guys who aren't getting what they used to, but the superstars are still going to get paid. So, uh, I, and I think what we've seen now is that the floor for a true star level player, like a guy who's going to put up six plus wins a season, is a quarter billion dollars. Nolan Arenado got 260, Machado 300, Harper 330, Trout now 430. And if you look at the actual extension, it's it's about 10 years and 365 million, somewhere in that vicinity. And so someone like, say, Mookie Betts or Francisco Lindor or uh, much more relevant to this program, Aaron Judge, uh, would seem to be in line for deals more along those lines. Uh, than something that would seem to be more below market. So if you're the Yankees, do you address this sooner than later, or do you just let it play out until he becomes a free agent? I mean, I, if I'm the Yankees right now, I do everything I can to lock up Aaron Judge. And I do that, honestly, because of what happened with Mookie Betts this winter. And, and it was a bit under the radar, but Mookie Betts last year, 
got ten and a half million dollars as a first-time arbitration eligible player. Now, arbitration history uh, has not shown, you know, much bigger than six, maybe seven million dollar raises. Mookie Betts settled for twenty million dollars this offseason, and next year. Uh, with Nolan Arenado settling at 26 million, Betts is likely to get upward of 30 million if he puts up a season anywhere close to what he did last year. So, uh, I, I think if I'm the Yankees, uh, I see Aaron Judge, uh, you know, with his Rookie of the Year and with the high MVP finishes and with the home runs, with all of those things that play so well in arbitration, this is going to be a guy who's going to ask for, you know, 11, 12 million dollars potentially that first year, and who could be in the 20-something million dollar range that second year and 30 million the third year, uh, all of a sudden then he's a free agent. And uh, I think you do everything you can if you're Hal Steinbrenner and Brian Cashman to get him locked up as soon as possible and try and keep him in pinstripes as long as you can. Yeah, but, but the flip side of that, though, Jeff, is because he went to college, you know, when he becomes a free agent, he's going to be 31 yep. years old. So the Yankees could yep. say, we'll pay him year to year as much as we have to arbitration, but why should we extend past 31? We don't know what type of player he's going to be. Uh, and that is a perfectly reasonable argument, Michael. Here's my counter to that. And, and this is the same thing I said with the Angels and what they did with Trout. Now, granted, they bought out Trout's free agent years starting at 28 years old. And so that's a lot different than what Aaron Judge is going to be. And Aaron Judge is 26 years old already. He's not right. going to be a free agent until you said he's 30 years old. Uh, that being said, if I'm the Yankees, I look at life with Aaron Judge and I look at life without Aaron Judge. And life with Aaron Judge looks a lot better than it does without Aaron Judge, particularly when you've got the young core that you do in place. Gleyber Torres is going to be around for, you know, six more years. Uh, and, and Miguel Andujar has a chance to be around for a while. I mean, they, they've got a really good core in place. Aaron Hicks is going to be around for another is. Eight years? Seven years, right? seven. Yeah, seven. Yeah, seven years. I mean, you want to keep as much of that core in place as possible. And beyond whatever Aaron Judge brings on the field, Michael, you're in the clubhouse. You know this. He is an A-plus human being. Well, he's a leader of the team. He is. He is. Yeah, and the Yankees his age. clubhouse yep. absolutely loves him. I remember when he was a rookie, Matt Holliday a guy for whom I have a deep amount of respect and have gotten to know throughout the years, came up to me unprompted and said, Aaron Judge is my favorite young player I've ever been around. And, and this is, the, like, work with me here, because this might sound a little weird, but you, you know, Michael, the way that clubhouses work and that being the DJ in the clubhouse, uh, the, you know, it confers some sense of, uh, responsibility or respect from your teammates. Aaron Judge was the DJ for the Yankees as a rookie. And I have never seen that before. Somebody who is able to walk into a clubhouse like that and immediately engender the level of respect that he did. So when the Yankees are trying to lock up Aaron Judge, it's not just because he's going to launch these majestic home runs. It's because they believe in him as much as a person as they do as a player. Great stuff, Jeff. Great job today with the scoop. We thank you for coming on. I know you're crazy busy. Pleasure as always, mine, boys. Thanks for having me.